Hello art friends, welcome back to Paperlicious Design Studio. Melissa here. Today's art journal layout features collage and stencil projects from Sean Petit. You can find still photos for inspiration and links to all the supplies over on the blog. The link is in the description box below the video. I use several free collage sheets from Sean's subscriber library, as well as Sean's butterfly notebook collage pack. I use the following stencils, lace, and Mediterranean Duo 1 on the original background design. They're not really visible in the end project since my original background idea didn't work out, but you get to see how awesome these two can be used in your projects if you like them. I used Mandala and Geo Minis in the next layer of the background. And then when I get ready to finish up the layout, I used Background Words, Dictionary Page, Be Strong, and Numbers Jumbled. So I want to begin with a quick explanation of the difference between a regular stenciled image and one that is created when the main image is a mask. When you apply ink over a regular stencil opening and lift it, the main image is the inked area. When you apply ink over a mask and lift it, the main image is the background. The ink is applied to the areas around the main image. With that being said, I had a plan in my head of how I wanted to use the lace stencil since the main image would mask the background. My idea was to do a gesso resist technique. I tried my idea out ahead of time on a piece of dictionary paper and it worked perfectly. I applied gesso through the stencil, applied ink with the Ranger Dauber tool over the gesso, then rubbed it gently with a baby wipe to lift the color off the gesso. I was so excited. I loved how the text and color appeared as the main image and I was ready to get started, but it didn't work out so well in my journal. So let's get started and you'll see what I mean. I started by tearing pages from an old dictionary. I wanted this project to be light and bright, so I wanted my initial collage to have a white background as well. I wanted the words to be in all different directions, so I tore the pages into strips and then adhered the strips with matte medium. I overdid it just a little. I really didn't need that much collage paper, but I wasn't sure how the page would take the ink versus the dictionary pages. I thought the ink might be darker on the pages versus the dictionary pages, so just to be safe, I covered the entire layout. Looking back, I see how once again, I was trying to control everything. I keep saying I want to develop more of an abstract style, but in order to do that, I need to learn how to go with the process and not be in control so much. So next I layered the lace stencil and pounced on thin layers of gesso using a piece of a makeup sponge. If you load your sponge with too much paint or gesso, then it'll smear under the edges of the stencil. So the key to getting crisp lines is to pounce on a couple of thin layers of your medium. Notice I didn't use the entire stencil. I left areas where I could apply another pattern to add interest. However, I didn't think about this until I got to the second page. If I ever do this technique again, I'll make sure and leave more space for the second stencil. I really like how the combination of the two different stencils looks together. After applying several layers of the gesso and letting that dry, I started adding my color. This is a Bally Blue Mermaid Marker by Jane Davenport. Next, I'll start adding the Worn Lipstick Distress Ink and Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink like I did when I practiced the technique earlier. I wanted to try different products because I wanted to show you how three different products would work with this technique and give you a variety of choices. But I also chose these because of the color combo. I'm using watercolor products because the gesso will resist them versus if you use acrylic paint, the gesso is made to go along with it and it doesn't resist. But then when I went to wipe the color off the gesso, the technique didn't work like it did earlier when I used it on the plain dictionary paper. I was completely surprised and couldn't figure it out at first. Then I figured out the difference. I applied the dictionary paper in the journal with matte medium. My theory is that it also works as a resist for the water-based products. I almost scrapped the project, but then I thought about how Sean does her projects. She just keeps building. It doesn't matter if the base layer shows up in the final project. It's all a part of your learning and growth as an artist when you try new things. Usually the next step is to knock it back with some gesso or paint. 
But then I had a new idea. Instead of knocking it back by rubbing gesso over the background, I decided to knock it back with gesso over more stencils. But before starting that layer, I decided I needed to seal the water-soluble ink with some clear gesso. So since my master plan failed, I decided to just go with the flow and see what happens. I used the Mandela and Geo Minis to knock back that background. I was a little less careful with applying the gesso and didn't mind it off, it smeared underneath. The Mandela stencils comes with the same design in three different sizes. So I just kind of spread those out across the layout. And then I worked two of the patterns from the Geo's mini stencil around the mandalas. It did take several coats of the gesso to cover the pattern below. The lesson I learned here was I should have used the super heavy gesso. It would have covered it in one coat. And now I'm getting excited about this background. I love all the little layers. I love the parts from the bottom that are peeking through. It's not a bold background. It's very subtle and soft, and that's exactly the look I wanted. So now I had to figure out where to go from here. When I started, I just wanted to play with my stencils and experiment. I had no master plan for a focal point or journaling. So I decided to let it sit for a day and see if anything came to mind. I started by going through Sean's collage papers for inspiration and decided to go with one of my favorite images, butterflies. I'm going to share more details about the collage sheets at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. The butterfly ledger and word strip collage paper are all free from Sean's subscriber library. The colors of the script paper and butterflies do not match the originals though. I have a really old printer that changes the colors when it prints. I also use Sean's butterfly notebook collage pack. This is just a few of the pages in that pack. It comes with 10 sheets. I trimmed out three circles and then tore around a couple of the butterflies. I had some mini paper bags and tags laying on my desk from another project, and you'll see me embellish them with the collage paper as well. I spent a little while just shifting the collage paper around and the other elements and once I decided on the layout I was able to finish up the background with more stencil work. Once I finalized where the tags, pocket, and circle elements would be placed, I started adhering the collage paper to the background. I'll use gesso to soften the edges and blend it into the background for a more cohesive look. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue to adhere the collage paper. It's interesting what I heard and how I related personally to this project as I was editing it. I started thinking about the layering process and how what you start with is often not visible in the end project. Personally, I have a bad habit of focusing on all the things I do wrong and on mistakes I've made in life. 
And all of it, the bad, the ugly, the mistakes, are a part of our story, our life project. It shapes who we are today. But those don't have to be the final layers. We can keep moving forward, keep growing, and keep working on who we want to be. Our lives are a journey and we get to pick how we want the final project to look. If we don't like our story, we can change it. We can start layering love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And all those layers will help us to create our greatest work of our, of our lifetime. It truly is a journey. Now I'm going to add some texture and contrast with stencils to the background. I like to know where the foreground elements will end up before starting this process. I started with the background word stencil. I was going to use ink, but I could feel the sponge catching on some of the stencil openings, so I decided to switch to paint. And as you can see, I had too much paint on my sponge and it smeared under the edges of the stencil. This was not the look I was going for, but I'll fix that in a minute. So I switched back to using the ink so I could get some crisp images. So if you're not familiar with my channel, I'd like to invite you to check out all my playlists. My videos are organized in playlists for different manufacturers as well as different project types. At this time, you can find playlists for Sean Petit, Stencil Girl, Tim Holtz Paper Dolls, Red Lab Paperworks, and Darkroom Door. I hope to be adding more manufacturer playlists soon. I have playlists for art journaling, altered projects, and art cards and I hope to be adding playlists for canvases and cards soon. I'm coming back in with a little more color. Not too much, I, I want that dreamy look. In case you're a beginner, I do want to let you know that even though I don't show it, I'm letting it dry in between all the different layers.
Now I'm distressing the edges of all the foreground elements with black ink and an eyeshadow applicator before adhering them to the background. And now I'm going to add a little grunge around the edges of the pages as well. This stencil is called Dictionary Page and I decided to use this one because it has a little definition for the word journey. It also has definitions for beauty, joy, and courage. I really love this stencil you guys. It's called Be Strong and it's got a lot of great phrases that you can use in your art journaling, on canvases, and on your art cards. And I'm just using some water on a paintbrush to go around the words to make the tissue paper easier to tear. And while I'm doing that I'll go ahead and read some of the phrases off on this stencil. It's got stay strong, you can do it, keep moving, adjust your thoughts, Live your truth, you got this, trust the timing of your life, be different, be you, create beautiful moments, don't forget to rest, breathe, and the one I'm using today is beauty is in the journey. Now I'm adding interest and shadow around the circles with a black soft pastel and a water soluble Stabilio pencil. I went a little further outside the circle than intended with the pencil and tried to pick it back up a little with a baby wipe. I decided to do a little more marking with a pen and that was a mistake. I knew you can't add pen over oil pastels but I didn't know you couldn't add them over soft pastels so I ruined this pen. Notice with the circles how only the circle in the middle has the words horizontal to the page. The other two are tilted in different directions. Try it. It's a lot more visually interesting that way. Now the next pen I tried is a Sakura Pigma FB pen. It's a, it's a brush pen. It's kind of like a felt tip. And it worked fine over the soft pastels. Now you could just adhere the foreground elements down at this point and wrap this layout up and it would look great as is. But I wanted to go for a more of a shabby chic look so I started adhering lace and trim on it. I used Aileen's Tacky Glue to adhere all the lace and trim. Can you see how the layout doesn't look balanced? With all the black shadowing on the circle side, it felt like it needed more black on the left layout. I love using numbers in my project, so I decided to go with the numbers jumbled stencil on the left side. I also trimmed out some of the phrases from the free collage sheet from Sean's library. I inked the edges and added them to the envelope and tags. They read, take a risk, seek adventures, with brave wings she flies, and journey. I tied some white eyelash type fiber to the top of all the tags. Next I started wrapping up the right side of the layout. I used matte medium to adhere my tissue paper phrase down. I inked the edges of the butterflies with black ink and adhered them into place with my tacky glue. I used foam tape to pop up the wings to give them some dimension. That pretty much wraps up today's project, unless you're hanging out for another minute for the info on the printables in Sean's Library of Freebies. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you were inspired, and if you were, I'd appreciate your support by giving me a thumbs up, leaving a comment, 
and the use of my affiliate link when shopping at Sean's store. There's no extra cost to you in doing so. You can find a link to my blog in the description box below for all the links to products and for still photos if you need them to inspire you. See you next time! So as I mentioned before, Sean has a subscribers library with free collage sheets. You can gain access by subscribing to her weekly newsletter on her homepage at SeanPetit.com. What's fun about Sean's collage sheet versus others that I've purchased in the past is that they're JPEGs. I've bought digital images before and they were PDFs and I couldn't alter them. With JPEGs, you can pull them up in your computer's basic photo program and alter them. A lot of the printables have a vintage look and they have a brownish hue to them. I can pull them up as a photo, increase lighting and then clarity, and knock that brown back a little. I can also convert them to black and white. So sometimes if the pages have a cream hue, I can get them closer to white. I can also print them in different sizes. The butterfly images along the right side of the layout in the background are the exact printable I used for the butterflies in the circles. Under my printer settings, I select what photo size I want, full page, 8x10, or 5x7. So that's how you can get different sizes from the same printable. Now you won't be able to get the pink color that my butterflies have on this layout. The butterflies in the original printable are an orange shade. Mine are just a happy accident from my 20 plus year old printer. It alters the colors, but I'm sure you could find other butterfly images to substitute on your layout. That's it for today guys, see you next time.